Welcome to this second video in our short series on breaking the chains of addiction. If you've been following along, you'll have briefly met Jay, a young man from London who battled his way out of porn addiction. So how did Jay reclaim control of his addiction to online porn? And what were the critical steps he needed to take to reclaim control of himself? If you want to find out and also learn how Jay's story can help you or someone you know, stay with me for the next few videos. Addiction, in whatever form it takes, is miserable. In its promise to remove, soften, or numb the problems you face, addiction robs you of your ability to gather the confidence and focus required to get back on your feet. Well, these are destructive behaviours that tart themselves up as discrete therapy. It's just this therapist never had your best interests at heart. So this is the trap of addiction. It's an abusive partner dragging your expectations down to the point where you'll accept anything because something is better than nothing. But it doesn't have to be this way. Withdrawal needn't be painful and difficult, and nor should it be. Because once you lift the veil and realise you've been hoodwinked, you won't want to go back again. I'm Dominic Decker, a qualified teacher, registered therapist, and your support behind Anxiety Master. This is your practical skills offer for a strong and confident life. In the previous video, we met a young man from London, then aged 23, Jay stumbled across online porn as a youngster. His initial shock and confusion soon turned to intrigue and curiosity, and so the path down a time-hungry and shame-filled rabbit hole had begun. Now, after many years of lost focus and control, Jay had reached a point where he knew he needed help to dig himself out and undertake a path to healing. In his attempts to stop being sucked down a slippery void of ever more crude material, he was sick of white knuckle riding against waves of strong desire, with only weakened willpower to help him. Because each time, the voice of addiction would take a hold and whisper to him, Go on, just do it, just this time. Besides, it's who you are, this is what you deserve. And so it was. Resigned to fate, he returned to the habit. It would open its arms and beckon him in. A rush of expected pleasure would await, and of course he took it. Because the feeling resembled care and comfort. Yet really, he knew he'd returned to a state of helplessness, that he'd gorged on a fraught and empty experience. And to top it off, the shame and regret that went alongside being chained to a habit, an internal idiot, he called it, to keep him hidden in the shadow of his real potential. Now, he'd been there countless times before, and now his habit's actual costs, lost time, money, mental health risks to well-being, they'd all crashed into focus. These flickers of fear, the moments of numbness. But what am I doing with my life? What will happen if I don't change my ways? What if I can't keep hiding this? I don't want this anymore. Jay was ready to reclaim control of his behaviour, and he wanted help to do it. So today, I want to share a broad overview of how we managed his recovery. And to start Jay's process, we discuss the nature of addiction and how it takes hold. If you, or someone you know, has a behaviour that causes distress, this is what you need to understand. We know from research that people who feel fulfilled and connected in their lives do not need, or stop needing, to indulge in addictive behaviours. In a famous experiment, Rat Park, rats were offered either morphine, laced, or ordinary water. But when kept alone in small cages, the rats tended to opt for morphine, yet opted to drink ordinary water when housed with other rats and presented with challenges similar to their natural habitats. So when the rats in the natural habitat were isolated in cages without stimulation, they chose morphine-laced water. In contrast, the initially isolated rats stopped opting for morphine when they returned to their natural style habitats. So in summary, animals do not want drugs when they can meet their instinctive needs for company, stimulation, gratification, challenge, etc. Well, similarly, most young people cease drug experimentation or other precarious habits when starting careers and families because they find new ways to experience meaning, purpose and belonging. So what can we take from this? Well, people are much more likely to get caught up in addiction when critical physical and emotional desires remain unmet. Now, perhaps because of the loss of a loved one or a relationship ending, losing work or becoming ill and losing a sense of self. Alternatively, the dissatisfaction arising from boredom or feeling trapped in difficult circumstances 
may lead first to depression and then by way of coping to addiction. So here we become vulnerable to the false allures that addiction promises. And Jay and I explored this together. In his case, a reliance on internet porn helped to sidestep uncomfortable feelings about his lack of confidence and attractiveness to the opposite sex. His addiction represented a stable relationship and reliable friend. It was a liaison that wouldn't reject or abandon him. Now, critically, indulging in his habit helped him feel competent and in control, and these were emotional desires that he had failed to satisfy in other domains of life. Yet now, hooked and paying the price for fool's gold, his ability to derive authentic emotional pleasure had been severely disrupted. And this understanding of addiction's deceit represented a wake-up call for Jay to get on the road to recovery. Yet he knew how enticing the swan song of his addiction was. The threat of relapse remained a second away. As he described it, his attention could be hijacked in an instant. Almost without warning, he could be summoned behind the screen to serve addiction's dysfunctional appetite. To understand what caused his total loss of control, we had to examine the gateway that kept urging a return to his destructive behavior. But for Jay to have a chance of reclaiming his power, he needed to understand the critical role of something known as the expectation pathway. Indeed, understanding the expectation pathway was vital to Jay's recovery. And we're going to cover precisely what this pathway is and how you can start to break it in the next video. See you there.